This is your demo in under 20. Um, a lot of people ask about using epoxy sculpt to do other things other than um, as an, use it as an adhesive. And if you're not familiar with epoxy sculpt, it's a molding uh, or like a modeling compound that you mix A and B together. It uh, mixes really well. I'll show you how in a second. It hardens and it can be used as an adhesive with jewelry, with beading. Um, lots of people use it to embed things in because it is so strong and it can hold up in exterior um, elements. But other people like Kelly Knickerbocker and her epoxy sculpt course can show you a multitude of other ways to use epoxy sculpt, how to tint it, um, and lots of other ideas for adding and creating tessera into your mosaics. Today, I'm going to show you a way to sort of create 3D um, objects that can then be mosaic and add into your mosaic art. So um, also Cheryl Cohen in her succulent course shows a few different um, ways to do uh, different things with epoxy sculpt. So this is just another thing that you can add to your mosaic. So this is a finished piece as far as it's hardened 24 hours later. Um, it's the shape of a petal or a leaf. I'm just doing something really simple. I'm gonna walk you through the steps and then in the next sections, I'll show you a couple different ways you can put a mosaic um, on top of them. This is Mexican Smalty. You can choose whatever tessera you like, beads, stained glass, whatever works for you. Um, just two ways to adhere them to uh, these once they've cured. So this is basically a two-day process. This is the same company, Aves. Avis, I'm not exactly sure how they say it, as what we did in our last demo in under 20, which was the um, paper mache. So with epoxy sculpt, you're going to take part A and part B. And I like wearing gloves. Some people do, some people don't. And the most important part when you're doing epoxy sculpt is that you want to get the even amount of your A and your B. So you're going to take a ball. We'll make that a nicer ball in one second after I get my B out and try and get, some people uh, weigh them to make sure they're the same, I eyeball. You wanna keep them covered once they are on. So that is too much of the B. So I'm gonna take away a little bit of the B. So we're gonna have now Let's see, I'd make a proper ball. It's easier to eyeball than a mush ball. I think I might still have too much of the bee. I do. See, it's just a little too much, but it can really change the chemical composition when they get mixed together. It's really important they be the same size. Okay, so now maybe I took too much away. So we will add a little more back. Um, so let's see. That, that still feels a little not enough. And you'll notice that if you do do this and you don't have it, it may not harden 24 hours later and that'll be the reason. So, okay. So those to me feel like even. So now we are going to mush them together and I like to press them together and fold. Press together and fold. And this is, I believe the natural color these come in a wide range of colors. And then, like I said, Kelly Knickerbocker's course, which is um, priceless because of the multitude of different ways you can use epoxy sculpt to get your um, different tessera, different colors, make versions of Filati with it. It's, it's really incredible what you can do with this product. And I'm a huge fan. And I think a lot of mosaic artists are. Okay, so the only thing about this color is because it's so similar in color, but it's usually the, um, I think it's the A that's the color. Yeah, A is the color, so this is natural. So this one will always change color. You can get black, you can get white, natural. They do come in other colors. This will always stay this color, and that's called the hardener. Okay, I'm feeling this is pretty good. So when we come back, I'm gonna take my gloves off and I'll show you how to roll it out, cut it, and shape it. 
All right, so here's our ball of epoxy sculpt. And just know that when you're working in epoxy sculpt, it's good to be on some kind of non-porous surface like wax paper. This is saran wrap I'm gonna show you how to use. Don't go to paper, don't go to metal. It will attach itself permanently to those kinds of um, substrates or surfaces. So you really wanna make sure you're using something that it will lift up from easily. I have an X-Acto knife here and I have just a roller, like it's a acrylic roller. You can use anything that you can roll out but start with just mushing it to a flat and you don't you want to decide you know how thick you want it as you can see here this is a little less than a quarter inch um, thickness that I could then use and apply it some way to a mosaic so just getting it rolled out as though it's going to cooperate we'll flip it over in a second Okay, so this has a bunch of texture on it, so it's kind of ripping up the epoxy sculpt. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this thickness, and now we're going to easily turn it this way, create this shape. Very simple. You can do it with a pencil first if you want, or if you feel confident, you can just take your blade and create your leaf or petal, or whatever shape gets you excited. So this, obviously flat, kind of boring looking, but we're gonna lift it up, pull it out of its... Now, here's where things get exciting. So if you wanna create this like undulated shape where it sort of goes up, down, and around, you bring in your saran wrap. And now you can use your saran wrap any shape you want so basically I just kind of laid it on there and then I sort of messed with it and I have two of them here so let's see if you want that shape to just sort of do the fold because you want it to make sure it stays flat here so that you can mosaic it and it's going to have a surface area to attach to your substrate so that's really important so when I did it uh, yesterday I made that flat and then I laid this over and it sort of leaned one way more than the other. So it's kind of like that's its you know, opposite. But you can do any shape you want. Maybe this is too um, high so you can lay it flatter. That's better, I think. And remember, if you're going to mosaic over it, which I think that's the intention for most of us, is that you want to make sure there aren't any like big bumps or gonna cause you any real issues. I'm gonna flatten this out even more. There, I think that's, yeah. So I've got flat here. I've got a little bit of a curve that'll give it a little height, but you don't wanna like go too far because you don't wanna sacrifice the structure, especially if you're gonna mosaic on it, but you wanna give it a little character. So a little turn, but remember, like here's the other one. It's got a little curve, a little turn here, but it's not gonna be enough. It's gonna hold um, me back from mosaicing on it. So you see that? So here we are, I've got my little curve. And then I actually turned up my little petal a little bit for a little more personality. But remember, mosaic's gotta go on there. So don't go crazy, which I haven't been known to do. So that would just hold it right there and it's 24 hours, don't touch it. And then you will just be able to lift it up. Now you can take your epoxy sculpt that you just uh, cut away from this one and keep doing this and you'll get, you know, different shapes, different sizes. You don't even have to use a roller if you want to just use your um, hands and just kind of, the best thing to do is flip it over because that sort of gives you the more flatter what was touching the table so that's pretty flat so now this one you could do all kinds of shapes you just do a heart but the best thing you can do is create some dimensionality with them by doing the saran wrap I highly recommend you don't leave it flat unless that's what your intention is but either way, what you're doing is you are creating 
another dimension to add to your flat substrate and you'll have something that has a little bit of lift off of your substrate and then you can mosaic it which i'm going to show you a little demo in our next um, section so there's epoxy sculpt how to cut it how to shape it and uh, when we come back i'll give you a little demo on how i mosaiced them now I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can mosaic on top of your hardened um, epoxy sculpt. So again, like I said, this is 24 hours ago and um, it's really uh, not going anywhere, super hard. And depending on how you plan to use your um, the epoxy sculpt little elements, Maybe you want to use a thin set that's been tinted and that way you can really get your edges done and maybe you even go over the back side of them so you can't see anything but color. Or maybe it's easier for you to just mosaic in like DAP Quick Seal, which I highly recommend more than Weld Bond, and then just paint your edges um, and paint the backs of them. Acrylic paint is fine for something like that if it's not going to move and it's not going to be outside and get um, weather on it. So think about all those elements when you're working with something like this. But um, what I did here for this one is I took a little bit of our super green tint and you can get it at Mosaic Arts Online and um, to put it with Mappe Thinset and Mappe Admix, which um, if you're not familiar with, it's very strong. So if, they're not, if you're not gonna grout, I highly recommend using the Admix. And again, another Kelly Knickerbocker um, course, Mastering Mud, will give you a lot of um, information on why and how to mix it, tint it, and use it. And that's a course I think everyone should have if you are um, ever gonna work in mortar, better known as Thinset. So here we are. I probably have like kind of overkilled this a little bit. And just so you know, when you work in Admix, it's a little gummier. It's not quite as loose as water. But again, I can like sleep at night because if I'm not gonna grout something, I just can't imagine not using Admix and trying to work clean is always the challenge. So have a rag or a wipe because you don't want it to get on your tessera, the tint, the mortar. So what I've been doing here is trying to create, you know, a little bit of a leaf sort of a vibe with my Mexican smalty. So I'll just do a couple bits of demo. Not that this is something you guys don't already know how to do, but why not just make along with me. And so I am, you know, just creating a little bit of a darker sort of line down the middle that's a little bit too thick. Let's see if I can make a thinner one. Yeah, take this one out. And then this one, that kind of thing would bug me so much if that was like a real permanent mosaic. I was making this being the demo. Gives you guys, I think, enough. I'm gonna go a little tighter so you can just see a little more what's happening. Okay, so now on the sides, obviously I'm using this like super cool colored green, which I probably should have picked the uh, green oxide, not the super green, against these warmer greens of the leaf. But that's a little too late for that right now. So there's, you know, a piece that could work there. Needs a little trimming. And then maybe, let's see if it needs to be cut in half. No, that kind of works. So what you want to try and do, the only thing I don't like is how much it's lining up with my dark green piece I just created. So I'm going to do that. So now these two don't line up and I could actually take its other half, go a little lower. And you see that? Now it's not lined up. There's not that uh, T's we call them, the, the grout lines that um, make it look like there's a T, which I don't like. So here's, this one's a little bit lighter, but it's still got that sand in the smalty. This is uh, Mexican smalty with sand in it. That's what gives it that funky, if it'll, yeah, can you see that texture? That's done with sand. Okay, so this is just, like I said, this is a demonstration just to give you guys different ideas, things to do with the materials. 
in our mosaic world, outside our mosaic world. I just love to open you up to different ideas. Okay, so that shows you how you could work with the thin set, epoxy sculpt, a little Mexican smalty, kind of fun, throw some gold in there if you have it. If you want, you could go far, now that this is getting wider here, let's just do one more to see what it would look like. See, that's too matchy to the center. I need something a little lighter. Oh, that should do. All right, so let's see if we were to go and put a piece in there. So I don't like it. I like everything to kind of go out. So yeah, we're not, it's not really big enough to, well, maybe, let's see if we do that. I'm just thinking of putting two pieces here, but you wanna make sure that curve starts to happen. You gotta respect the line and then, oh, maybe that goes in. Oh yeah, nice. And now that piece goes in there. Now it's getting more interesting looking. Adding a couple different layers, getting some of that line to break up a little bit because the wideness of this leaf shape, it's all starting to kind of find its way. So that might be tilting too far. We got to kind of respect the this line too. So let's see, we're going to shorten this guy just a little bit. Now, you can put that in there. Come on. I'm going to get a little more off. It's all changing right before your eyes, and my hands are getting really messy, which is not good. Got to work clean. I probably should have tweezers, but they're way over there. So anyway, that's the idea. It's just to create more interest. Work clean, create interest and continue till you have finished your leaf. Okay, so while I still have you here, let's quickly do um, a much more simpler, get this stuff off of here, just so we don't, but you get the idea. So DAP Quick Seal, great for exterior um, bits. I am without a, uh, way to apply it. So we're going to go total gorilla style. And let's see here. Ooh, this has a nice keystone. Watch this. So in this keystoning, if you don't know, is when we have our pieces are wider on the top than they are on the bottom. And it allows us to make a curve without leaving a gap. So I've covered uh, my piece with a little uh, adhesive. And as you can see, you see how nicely they line up next to each other because of the curve that's starting to happen with the leaf and the um, way that the glass is cut. So let's do one more. So if you don't, I'm sure many of you are aware of keystoning, but if you're not, here's another piece that has it. And we'll give it a little bit on the other side too. So now both sides are keystoned. And that makes a nice curve there. So gorilla style putting the adhesive down because I don't have another palette knife or spatula to apply it. But again, just more tips and tricks because I want you guys to be a success at what you do. Again, see how nicely it's a little too big for um, this piece, but the idea that this lines up to that is great and it's got that little bit of that hump there so I'm gonna cut this one there and let's just see how that goes and maybe a little nope that works and now we're going over that hump but everything is staying really nicely like so so this will dry clear and you can continue to mosaic all in here, however you see fit. Just respect your interstices, which are the grout joints. Make sure they stay consistent. And this one, you could either grout it or not and um, paint the edges, the backs, however you see, but your uh, adhesive will dry clear. So that is your demo in under 20. Go get some epoxy sculpt and start building cool shapes.